Hello and welcome to my next video on rate of reaction and equilibrium. Now, reactions are caused by randomly moving particles and they will collide with each other. For a reaction to be successful, they need to collide in the right direction, so usually head on, because you don't want two things to just skim each other, they won't react. And you also need to collide with enough kinetic energy called the activation energy. This varies for each reaction. Now these are affected by temperature, pressure and concentration. If you increase temperature, you increase two things. Particles will will have more kinetic energy, so they will vibrate more, so there will be more collisions per second. And they'll have more of them will have the activation energy, so there will be more successful collisions per second. Pressure. Pressure, this is particularly involving gases. The um, If you increase the pressure, that means the particles will be more closer together, so they are more likely to collide. Same thing if you have concentration. There is more particles closer together, so they will collide more often, more chances to react. Also, rate of reaction can be increased with a catalyst, which we'll talk about later. Right, here are two enthalpy profile diagrams. Now this is more for enthalpy, but it applies to rate of reaction. So we've got an exothermic and endothermic. And all you see, Ea activation energy, delta H is the change in temperature. And we'll go on to more about these as we show rate of reaction. And here is the Boltzmann distribution. Now, under the curve is the number of molecules you've got. And you've got the number of molecules under the curve after Ea is the amount of molecules have the sufficient energy to react. And they're the number that will react. Now, if we change temp Boltzmann distribution can be used to show the effect of temperature. Here we've got the normal one, T2, and I've I've just made up some temperatures. We'll say root uh, we'll say body temperature I've given this from 30, 37 degrees. Now if temperature if T1, so you lower the temperature to let's say 10 degrees. What happens is the two important things when drawing these curves, if temperature is decreased, the curve shifts to the left and the peak increases. And then we'll go down. In as you can see, it's got T1 has less area under the curve after Ea than T2. T3 isn't a temperature increase. So the curve shifts to the right and the peak of the curve is lower. And that has more area under the curve after Ea than T2. If there's more end area under the curve, more molecules, more molecules with enough activation energy to react, rate of reaction increases. So, catalysts. Catalysts increase the rate of reaction by providing an alternate reaction pathway that has a lower activation energy, and they are chemically unchanged in a reaction. Advantages of catalysts, why we use them, they often increase the percentage yield, they just increase yield. Because if they increase the rate of reaction, you get more product quickly, as they speed up reaction. Also, it lowers the cost because it means you don't need to have such high temperatures and pressures. Now, it can also be good for the environment because it saves energy. If you have less temperatures, less high temperatures, less pressure, it means that you're not putting in as much energy into that reaction. So, it obviously, increase decreases cost via energy, but also means that um, you don't damage the environment as much by releasing CO2 and other horrible gases. Now, enzymes are biological catalysts. If you watch my video on enzymes, you'll know about that. But um, what, why they can be used in chemical reactions? Because they can work at room temperature and pressure, being quite cheap. Um, often though, they actually work about 37, really. Um, they produce pure products because they... Um, Unlike you know chemical catalysts, they're less likely to contaminate or anything. They are bi they're biodegradable, and also usually one enzyme will only work for one reaction. Unlike some catalysts, chemical catalysts, which work for many reactions, so it, it provides specific specificity, specificity, um, which is what you want in a reaction. Now this is the entropy profile diagram. If you increase, if you use a catalyst, 
EA is the original activation energy, EC is the activation energy of a catalyst, so it lowers the activation energy, so less energy is needed. But as you see, delta H does not change. For Boltzmann distribution, the way of showing it, what well you do, exact same curve, the curve doesn't change, but EC is further back than EA, more molecules under the curve, so there are more molecules that can react, rate of reaction increases. Dynamic equilibrium, I've written this equation about five times in this, um, this uh, video. This is the one of the of the um, harbour harbour cycle for ammonia production. N two gas plus three H two gas becomes two NH three gas, and is a reversible reaction. It means that once it goes forward, it can go back, and it's in dynamic equilibrium, which means both are happening at the same time. Also, delta H of the forward reaction is minus ninety two kilojoules. That means the forward reaction is exothermic, the backward reaction is endothermic. And also, if you look, this will become more important later, left-hand side has four moles of gas, one of N2, three of H2, and the right-hand side has two moles of ammonia gas, NH, two NH3. So, how do we know how dynamic equilibrium works? Well, this, the Chatelier's principle. When a system in dynamic equilibrium is subject to change, the position of equilibrium will shift to minimize that change. So, basically, if you have something that is in dynamic equilibrium, products being formed and then changed back, there's a position of equilibrium. This is where the products, where they stops going back and forth. So you get a set number of product. And it could be 100% product, 0% reactant, or it could be 100% reactant, 0% product, but it's usually somewhere in the middle. Now, if you give a change of concentration, pressure, temperature, the position of equilibrium will move to make sh to kind of counteract that change. I'll show you. Temperature. So the forward reaction is exothermic, so it gives off heat. Now if you put more heat into the, s into the system, it's going to try and mean that less heat is given off. Now by doing this, it's going to go to the endothermic reaction, the one that takes in heat. So it shifts to, in this case, the left-hand side. So all you write, so if your question says, what happens if you increase the temperature? The position of equilibrium will shift to the left-hand side because the forward reaction is exothermic. And if you decrease the temperature, the opposite happens. So less energy is being given in, so they're going to want to give off more energy. So it goes to the exothermic side, the forward reaction, the right-hand side. So if temperature is decreased, there's a right-hand side shift of equilibrium position because the backward reaction is endothermic. You can say the forward reaction is exothermic, both give valid reasons. Pressure. Now, pressure is affected by the number of moles of gas. If you increase the pressure, it means you have more moles of gas in the same space. So if you increase the pressure, it will go to the it'll go to the side where there's less moles of gas that are being produced. So in this case, it'll go to the right-hand side because there's two moles on the right-hand side, four moles on the left. So you say, if the pressure was increased, the position of equilibrium will shift to the right-hand side because there are more moles of gas on the left-hand side. And obviously it's the opposite for if you decrease pressure. Also, concentration works very much the same. If you increase the concentration of the products, the position will shift to the reactants and vice versa. Now, why is this important? Because of compromise when doing chemical um, processes. Now, because you want to produce the highest yield possible, but you want to do it quickly. No point having 100% percentage yield if there is no, if, if it takes you know a year to do so. But then again, there's no point getting it all in five seconds if you've only got 1% product. So, in this case, the harbour process, it so react to the forward reaction exothermic so you want low temperatures so because if there's low temperatures it will favor the reaction that gives off most heat the forward reaction so you get more ammonia and since there is less moles of gas on the right hand side you want high pressures to favor the low number of moles 
but this since there's low temperature it creates a slow rate of reaction because the molecules don't have as much kinetic energy don't have as much activation energy also high pressures are expensive and dangerous so you want this but you can't it's it will not give you not give you the right amount of yield it will give you the right amount of yield but it will not it won't do it quick enough so what you do need is a high temperature to increase the rate of reaction, low pres pressure to make it inexpensive, and a catalyst to speed up the rate of reaction further. So this is a compromise between yield and rate of reaction and cost. And that's what you have to do. Now, there are many different reactions they could give you. All you do is you look for if the forward reaction is exothermic or endothermic, and how many moles of gas are on each side. You then look if they're increasing temperature, decreasing increasing pressure decreasing and then make sure you counteract that read the question really carefully and that's that conclusion so rate of reaction is is um influenced by temperature concentration and pressure and catalysts Le Chat now when a system is in dynamic equilibrium the chatelier's principle applies so the the position of equilibrium will shift to minimize a change if a if a um, system is in dynamic equilibrium and often chemists need to create a compromise between rate of reaction and yield and that's all you need to know it's a simple topic but can be quite confusing so i hope that all makes sense and um yeah um second chemistry video hope you liked it and yeah i will see you next time thank you for watching goodbye